right, so in this last section, we're going to look at using the ArcGIS Model Builder um, within ArcGIS Pro. And again, this is actually fairly similar to ArcMap, so it shouldn't be a tough transition. So if you're not familiar with Model Builder, it basically allows you to combine analysis tasks and tools into a single processing chain. So um, if you do a bunch of steps one by one, you might find that it's more efficient to actually string those together and make a tool that does it all in sequence. Uh, one thing nice about Model Builder is that it uses a graphical interface so you don't actually have to do any coding. Um, so you can kind of think about this like a graphical coding or graphical tool creation environment. Okay, so there's lots of different components to Arc, uh, to Model Builder, but I honestly use a few of these a lot more commonly than I use others. So for example, you're always going to have input variables and data and input parameters and you're going to, and tools. Um, so you know, you're going to input some data, you're going to do something to it with specific parameters applied. Um, you're going to have intermediate outputs potentially, so these are not really your final output, just things that are generated as you work through the process. And then you can have your final outputs, so that's what you're actually trying to derive or obtain. You can also incorporate other models as like sub-processes sub and even Python scripts. You can also integrate tables and iterators. Um, iterators allow you to iterate over something. So for example, rows in a table, um, files in a folder, feature classes in a database, rasters in a folder, so on and so forth. Um, this is a, the underlying structure of Model Builder. So you're going to have inputs, tools, and outputs. Um, inputs are generally shown as, uh, as blue ellipses. Tools are, are going to be yellow, rounded corners, rectangles and then greens are going to be your intermediate and final outputs. This is showing some of the key uh, functions from the model builder uh, uh, tab. So I'm just going to point out a few of these uses. This new option allows you to generate a new model. Note that models by default have to be saved in a toolbox. Um, this allows you to save the model as you make edits. Save as will allow you to make copies. Properties allow you to find properties of the model, which can be valuable when you want to actually generate a tool from the model. This sets your environments. Uh, note that environments set within Model Builder are only honored in the model. They're not going to be honored if you run a process outside the model in the same map project. Um, auto layout is used to make a cleaner representation of the workflow. So basically, Arc will go through and realign everything so it looks a little cleaner. Uh, fit to window is used to fit the entire extent of the model in the current view window. Um, this allows you to go back to the last extent, you, and this could go forward if you've had moved back and forth between extents. Um, this also this allows you to lock um, uh, functions and then zooming in and zooming out. Uh, this allows you to select and pan uh, around the workspace. Uh, validate is used to test and see if there's any issues that are going to arise prior to running the tool. Um, it doesn't always catch everything, but generally it is a good idea to validate it before you attempt to run it. Run will actually execute the model. Uh, this tools icon allows you to select tools to add into the model. Note that you can also just drag tools in from the toolbox, which is what I generally do. Uh, variables allow you to add variables such as inputs. Iterators allow you to set up an iterator such as iterating through files. Um, you can also set up logicals, so for example, for like control flow, so if you want something to happen if this is true versus something else happen if it's not true. You can also define labels, which, is, which can be helpful for making the model a little bit more readable and understandable. And you can also group components in the model just for making it a little bit more legible. Okay, so once you've created a model, again, it has to be saved into a toolbox. Unless you move it, it's going to get saved into the default toolbox um, for that specific project, which will be generated whenever you generate the project along with the default file geo database. Um, so this is showing you how to create a new toolbox. So new 
toolbox. Again, you could do that in our catalog if you're if you're still using that, or you can generate this within um, within Arc Pro natively. Okay, and then once you have a model, you can actually turn it into a tool so that an end user doesn't actually have to open the model and interact with it, but instead they can interact with it as they would any other tool in one of these uh, uh, dialog boxes where you can enter inputs, outputs, and, and parameters and whatnot. So in order to do that, you're going to have to set some user-defined parameters, um, and you may want to rename inputs and outputs so that they look a little bit cleaner when you try to run the model. And in your task, you're going to actually work through that process and create a model that has well-defined parameters. Uh, so basically build your own tool. Okay, so that brings us to the final task in the course, which is to produce a simple model that summarizes the area of palustrian wetlands that may be impacted by a proposed highway. So to do this, you're going to you're being provided with a, a proposed highway route, some wetland extents that incorporate palustrian wetlands and other types of wetlands, um, and this is just uh, displayed over top of a default base map. So you're going to create a, a model builder tool with these components, and then once it's generated, you're going to actually generate a tool from it by defining parameters and then setting up to run within a toolbox.